Hi everyone, this is Amy. Welcome to my channel. I'm often asked, how often should I skate? Ice skating is a challenging sport requiring discipline to master complex elements. So skaters should spend as much time on the ice as they can. Serious competitive skaters spend 10 to 20 hours on the ice every week. That's three to four hours a day, six days a week. Seriously, it's true. It's almost impossible to succeed at the highest levels of such a technical and complex sport without that level of commitment. It takes time and hard work on the ice, as well as incorporating rest, good nutrition, off ice training, and more. But how much time you spend on the ice will depend on your goals. Fortunately, there's a formula that I use to simplify it for beginning skaters. For recreational skaters just starting out, this includes skaters that are in group lessons as well as skaters in private lessons that are only skating one to two times a week and haven't started jumping yet. You should spend at least as much time practicing as you do in your lessons. Ideally, this would be on different days. Coaches can spend less time perfecting and correcting previously learned skills. Can you try it on one foot, the whole thing, like the entry? Oh, one foot entry. Yeah. There you go. Oh, you gave up. Why did you give up? I'm like so close. And more time teaching new skills when skaters practice independently. If you're taking one half hour lesson a week, you should practice for at least an additional 30 minutes on your own. The issue with only skating once a week is that skaters spend half of the session trying to remember what it was they were doing the week before. Well, you're scraping your toe going into it. Yeah, and Do then I'm going, that? yeah, and then I'm going back. And I'm just like not turning. Well, your posture is not working Great. for you today. Yeah. yeah. Try it again with better posture. Better posture. If you can take lessons twice a week, you'll progress faster. If you have two 30 minute lessons a week, you should practice for at least one hour in addition to your lessons. This is the minimum though. You'll need even more lessons and practice time to be genuinely competitive or if you're preparing to pass your moves or skating skills tests. I often see skaters or parents disappointed with their placements at competitions. If you compete, even at the lower levels, you may be competing against skaters that spend three hours on the ice six days a week. That's not uncommon, even at the very lowest levels. Many skaters spend an hour to 90 minutes on the ice every morning before school and another hour or two on the ice after school with additional ice time over the weekend. These skaters often take a minimum of one and often two private lessons each day sometimes even more. Suppose you go into your next competition expecting to stand on the podium. In that case, you must put in the time and not just temporarily, only to prepare for that competition. You need to be consistent with your lesson and practice schedule. A skater that wins the gold medal is likely putting in 12 to 18 hours of on ice time a week, plus off ice strength and conditioning work too. It's just not likely that a skater on the ice for one to three hours a week will outplay skaters putting in so much more time. Think of it this way. You're not gonna ace a test in school by not doing your homework, right? There are no shortcuts to success in skating or life for that matter. You have to put in the time and do the work. If at work, you had an opportunity to get a promotion by working one more hour a week, you would do it, right? What if you could get promoted two levels by adding two more hours a week? How about moving up three levels just by working three more hours. You would work those three additional hours, right? It's the same thing here. The more time and effort you put in, the more rewards you will see. Here's a fun fact. Training muscle groups takes a minimum of two times per week. This is a scientific fact. So skating once a week for an hour won't be enough if you want to advance your skills. That said, it's preferred recreational skaters are on the ice at least three days a week with the time split equally between practice and lessons with their coach. That helps maximize the repetition of skills learned while minimizing the potential for errors. Figure skating depends on building muscle memory through consistent practice and repetition. Developing muscle memory takes time effort, good coaching, 
and quality practice. Once your muscles remember what to do, it will build your confidence, performance ability, and your enjoyment of skating. Here's another formula that I use. When skaters begin learning jumps and spins, skating four to six times a week with the appropriate number of private lessons is appropriate. Base your amount of practice on the jumps you're working on. Figure out the number of rotations for each of your jumps. Let's say you're working on waltz jump. That's a half rotation, but you're also working on a half flip, toe loop, half lutz, sow cow, half loop, and a flip. That's five rotations in total. That means you should be on the ice a minimum of five hours a week. You do wanna be mindful that you're taking lessons in addition to your independent practice though. The maximum time you should practice on your own versus with a coach in a lesson is two to one. Of course, this varies depending upon the skater and the coach. For some skaters, 50-50 is a better ratio. Let's go back to that five hour number. You should be in lessons for two to two and a half hours of that five hour time. Why? Coaches can see things that you cannot. We help you make corrections so that you use proper techniques with the appropriate order of progression. I often find that skaters will search for information on a specific skill or even a jump they want to learn and try it out before they're ready. This is not really recommended and one of the reasons that I don't do straight up skating tutorials. You guys know that. You just cannot learn to skate by watching videos on YouTube. I'm sorry, but you really can't. Many of the more complex elements are much more complicated than they appear to be. When you watch a video with an elite skater doing a jump or a spin, they have literally spent hundreds, often thousands of hours working with their coach to get them there. Of course, videos can be useful when you're looking for some information on a skill you're already working on with your coach. Still, videos are not a substitute for coaching. Some coaches may find that the videos you're using are not showing you the same technique that they're teaching you. Figure skating is a sport that requires professional supervision. Skaters who practice more independently than in a lesson can often pick up bad habits. These can become difficult for your coach to correct when you skate more often on your own than in a lesson with them. Learning the correct technique and practicing it consistently is best so you don't have to relearn or break a bad habit. So play it safe it's best to split your time equally between lessons and independent practice. A note to parents of younger skaters, ages three to about six or seven, may not be able to follow a practice plan from a binder or a notebook. Most rinks have a code of conduct where parents are not permitted to coach their children from rink doors or other rinkside locations. Honestly though, even if your rink does allow this, it's not a good idea because it disrupts other skaters' practice and lessons. Some rinks may ask you to leave or put the coach on notice if parents are coaching skaters. Younger skaters should always be in a lesson until they're mature enough to practice independently. Also, I should mention, try to avoid taking too long or too many breaks from skating. Every time you're off the ice for a week, you're gonna spend twice as long playing catch up it's true. Let's say you take eight weeks off from skating over the summer. It can likely take you 16 weeks to get back to where you were before you took that time off. Often we've made so much incredible progress that I don't want to see a skater regress in their development. All that said, just spending time on the ice is not enough. You need to spend your ice time productively. Ask your coach to develop a plan for you. With my skaters, many other coaches do this too. I use a binder. I actually have a whole system that you can use too. It's my figure skating planner. You can find that on my website. My skaters bring their binders to their lessons. I give them a plan for their upcoming practice sessions. This way, the skater can self-direct their practice with quality. Here are some guidelines for you to be more productive in your practice. Warm up on the ice for five minutes. Work on your moves, turns, skating skills, and footwork for 15 minutes. Spend 15 minutes on spins and 15 minutes on jumps. Then go through all your programs. Also, I provide my skaters an off-ice warm-up and a cool down too. This should be at least 15 minutes before and 15 minutes after each time you're on the ice. You will be amazed how much the simple act of warming up and cooling down can have on your skating progress. If your rink has limited ice time or your schedule or budget doesn't allow for as much practice as is recommended, Try not to be discouraged, but do manage your expectations. I have one skater that says she wants a triple axel, but 
she only skates once a week. It's not likely to expect that outcome with once a week on the ice. If you can't be on the ice as much as you would like to, do what you can to maximize the time you do have by following your coach's practice plan, working with a certified strength and conditioning specialist with experience training figure skaters. Well, also assist you with strength, flexibility, and stamina. Get proper nutrition. You can work with a nutrition coach, health coach, registered dietitian, or nutritionist. Remember, you are what you eat. Consider adding ballet, yoga, Pilates, gymnastics. It is possible to enjoy figure skating on many different levels, from recreational to testing only, to competitive, to elite. Have a conversation with your PSA ranked and rated coach. Ensure that you're practicing appropriately to achieve your expectations. If it's just not possible for you to do everything that you'd like to do with what you're able to do in terms of practice and lessons, that's completely okay. Just be mindful of that. Manage your expectations by creating attainable goals with your practice and lesson schedule. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and share it with somebody else you think it could help. Just post it on your social media too. I post videos every week that can help you with your figure skating, your fitness, nutrition, and ultimately live a better life. So remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that you never miss a video. This is Amy, happy skating. Thank you for watching. I will see you real soon. Bye.